What on earth is that? It's a journey into comics network production! Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? I always ask that of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. Brought to you by the power of the Journey Into Comics Network. This is the Journey Into Comics Podcast. The show that's 100% dedicated to everything nerd. With your host, the Podfather, Nate Phillips, the Podmaster, Brandon Stone, and the Journey Into Comics Network stepdad, Tyler McLaughlin. Time to make the Jimmy Chunks. Hey! Excellent! Finally. What did you do? <laughs> and here we go. Can somebody tell me what kind of a world we live in where a man dressed up as a bat gets all of my press? This town needs an enema. What's up, True Believers? Welcome back to another episode of Journey into Comics. Today, it's Journey into Comics 326. I am the Podfather, your host, Nate. Today, joining me as always, you know him and love him as the Podmaster. We see him here as often as he gets to be here with us, and we're always grateful to have him on. Welcome back to the show, co-host with the co-most, Brando. How's it going? It's going pretty well today. Uh, Yeah, I wasn't here last week, you know. Uh, in uh, coming forward in the next couple of weeks, Tyler may not re- be with us. He, he's going to be swamped, 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 swamped. Uh, some of his work days make me depressed, and I'm already depressed. So there we go. <laughs> Telling you, bro, it's awful. Uh, Just hearing him talk about how awful it is, I'm like, oh. I know, I know. You know, uh, our, our dude, our our thoughts definitely go out with Tyler and and all he does to bust his butt uh, to do what he does, and um, you know. We are reviewing the Batman Death in the Family, and we're going to continue to do that as soon as possible, as soon as we can all be here. As we said before, we don't really want to do that when it's only going to be two of us. We want to, we all three want to like weigh in uh, on that, and um, that was supposed to be last week. It's not going to be this week or maybe next week. But when we do, when we do know, you're definitely going to see it either in the t- episode title or it's going to be definitely right there in the beginning of the description. That way you know if you've been following along with that. That way, you know, hopefully you guys don't have to wait too much longer to hear the final uh, thoughts on that book because I read the second part of it and was like, all right, here we go. It's starting to cook up a little bit now. Definitely, definitely picked up, and we would definitely be diving into it. I will say it kind of allows us for the opportunity to uh, wade through the waters because right now in the weirdest thing, you know, we're at the end of 2020, talked about all year, like there's not a lot to talk about. All It's all gloom and doom, shit's bad. But then like this week, is one of the most impressive, busiest news weeks in media history. I mean, at least in this year alone. Mm-hmm. So uh, we had, well, we had, know, a, we talked about, well, we had the WB thing like back in August. That was like a beacon of like, boom, here's some cool stuff. And then we went to a dark yeah, period. Yeah, totally. We, you know, b- went through that, and then you know, we had a little bit here and there, a little, a little pop, a little over here pop thing here. New consoles launched. You know, there's some, some trials and tribulations with that. Apparently. The PS5 is the biggest console launch in North American history for the month of November. And wow. the Xbox Series S and X launched lower than the Xbox One. Uh, that's very interesting news. Uh, I, I, I can't wow. substantiate that. That's just some 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 headlines that I saw shared, or, uh, or not the actual articles, but like information shared from other people who know way more than I do. So sure. I'll just take that as, as I, I guess gospel from them, but if it's wrong, please don't don't like, don't attack this messenger. That was just very interesting. And then we roll into to December, and on one day, one night, we have the the Disney investors thing, and then the video game awards. Which the video game awards they always come packed in with some new announcements. Uh, from you know, brand new announcement for for new games that you've never seen before. You got new trailers for stuff you might have forgotten about, or ongoing stuff like your Fortnite and uh, new uh, Among Us and uh, 
and uh, Fall Guys and 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 you know and Call of Duty and the stuff that it has like multiple seasons. Hey, there's a new thing. Here's what we're gonna do. But quite literally, I had two screens going at once because the Disney one merged into the video game one, <laughs> and uh, I and I didn't want to miss anything from either. I will say the beginning of the Disney one was definitely this. Oh yeah, because they're oh, just man. like blabbing, and it was very little information. I I laughed a lot because. I, I I got into actually watching late. I was just getting home from work, and I was like, "Oh shit, they're they're, they're on! I gotta catch up. Like, what's going on?" And I clicked on, and it was just like a background picture of some fucking mountains, and then they were like, "Exciting new news coming to Disney Plus," and then it just showed a picture of like Michael Keaton and two other actors, and then the title of the movie, and it didn't tell you shit. And That's I was a just TV like, show. Is That's this what t- this is gonna be? Okay, and some of it was that. Like in the very beginning, it was literally. Uh, they were talking about uh, ESPN Plus, and they were talking about Hulu, and then they were talking about like the apps and like the number. Like it was. Please remember, this is an investors conference. This wasn't a for the commerce, co- you know, conference. This was uh, they would say something, and they would t- like, and it goes, and we're gonna take a look at that, and then. You would get the image of the logo. Your presentation will continue in <laughs> one minute and 25 seconds. And they would count down. <laughs> it, 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 but sometimes you would get, like you said, the logo and little box of the actors associated with it. No other information. No trailer. No sizzle. No uh, interviews with the actors. Oh, I'm really excited to work about this. No. The first one, I believe it was called... Uh, this, this murders happen here, or the only murders here. Or something it was something like that. I, but it was Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. And I, and I'm looking at that, going, one of these things is not like the it's other. Not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what is this? <laughs> and then we had the uh, the show with Michael Keaton and the other guys. That was like these these investigators or something like t- tackling like the. Uh, like, 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 really bad, like, drug addiction or like, like, drug trafficking, whatever it is. It's like very interesting, whatever, cool. But we also had like a lot of stuff from F. From, they did this whole thing about FX too, and there was that thing. It's like, so we had a lot of stuff like Alien, a new Alien series. One thing that's that, exciting. The one thing that popped me is that they're remaking Shogun, that old Japanese. Uh, Shogun. <laughs> That's the only thing that I can think. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, they're, they're doing a new adaptation of it. And I believe they they said the words "Game of Thrones" twice in trying to describe this show. They said you know, it, they're trying to make it like like set in the real Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, over in feudal Japan. And then basically, I think one of the directors he maybe he was the director of the original pilot for Game of Thrones. Is doing uh is, is doing part of this, so it's like there's gonna be some talented guys involved with that. So that got me going a little bit. Also, the Alien series, you know, Ridley Scott's involved with it as well. So that's kind of cool. Excellent. You know, I mean, he's not like the main guy, but you know, he's he. But he'll probably like Game of Thrones here. He'll probably be like the George R. R. Martin of that show. Like, I eh, do this. I eh, don't do that. Yeah, that. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like it. You know. Absolutely. <sighs> But then we got to the juicy stuff. It it, it, it it took a while. It took a long while to get to the juicy stuff. But it was like eating sand to get to a cheeseburger. <laughs> when, you know? when you get it's there, like, man, it, and it was juicy. I don't find a cheeseburger. <laughs> it was juicy. Now, before we get to the stuff, okay, so we actually have some pictures. We're going to put up some, but before we get there, because we're, we are sandwiching, like you had, like, we, we had Star Wars stuff. And then we had Disney animation news, but also yep. just like Disney, like they're doing a live action uh, Peter Pan with Peter and Wendy. They're doing a, yeah, a live action. It is for Peter and Wendy. Huh? I said, I th- yeah, it is called Peter, Peter and Wendy, Wendy, right? That was yeah. what they, yeah. Uh, they're doing a Beauty and the Beast prequel of sorts. Maybe it's before he was a beast. Maybe he's as a beast. Maybe she's a beast. If anyone else calls you beast, I'll rip their lungs out. Um, <laughs> Hope you liked that callback. But, oh, uh, I did. That was a good callback. But then the Pixar stuff—they're like they're—they're they're, they're doing a movie about Buzz Lightyear. Lightyear, but Chris Evans is Buzz Lightyear, not. Okay. Uh, so, so the way face? the way the way that it's described, okay. 
sure. Woody is based off of Woody's Roundup show. We saw that in Toy Story 2. Okay. Buzz Lightyear yeah. is based off of a blockbuster movie that came out within the Toy Story universe. And they are making... Called that, Lightyear. They're making the blockbuster movie. And so so Chris Evans is not voicing Buzz Lightyear the toy. He's bu- he's voicing Buzz Lightyear the action hero. I love it. That's, and, it's very clever. And so it's, it's, it's a way to continue doing that same stuff, and but it's different. So, you know... I'm on board with that. I'm cool. I'm I'm cool with it. Um, but then we'll we'll go ahead and, and and rewind it back now because they started it off the big info dump juiciness with Star Wars. Yeah, Brando. Where and do you want to start? Right now, folks. Let's just. Well, here's the deal. It 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 really is based on how easy of access this is going to be for you because I want to make it as simple as possible. Brandon's Yo, running the show today. You just so, say what it is, so. and, I, and and I'll make sure it gets up. Well, the first thing I saw in in the news of Star Wars stuff, and I don't remember if I like went to the bathroom, I had my phone down, my phone died or something, but there was like a five minute gap of me watching where I missed a couple things. I came into the chat and I was like, "Fucking Ahsoka!" Did you guys hear? Like they're gonna like that was that was pretty big news for me that that just on the heels of Ahsoka Tano being in the Mandalorian. We are officially getting Rosario Dawson being locked into that role. She's going to be having her own spinoff series. That series is going to have a crossover event with The Mandalorian, possibly as early as next season, um, which we can talk about The Mandalorian because that got, got some info and news as well. And but um, I, have yeah. you seen the new the episode? Tano thing. Oh yeah, we're okay. yeah we'll be so we'll yes. do that at the mm-hmm. end of the show. Yeah yeah we'll talk about that at the end for sure. Uh, but I just want to quickly on the Ahsoka thing say I'm just glad that they actually decided to pull the trigger because I do believe this is a, a really smart step in that direction, especially with what they've done with Mandalorian, being able to tell fringe stories of some of the characters that already exist in this universe. Ahsoka is really more in the center of the universe now, and she has so many attachments to so many fan-favorite characters that we're going to have a high possibility of seeing a lot of returns, a lot of crazy things we probably can't even anticipate or expect here because of her involvement in Rebels and Clone War and everything, you know. She's mm-hmm. very, very prominent. Um, so, yeah, I was excited about that. What are your thoughts on Ahsoka getting her own series? I mean, it's an absolute win. Uh, was there some controversy? And Am I missing something about the casting from of Rosario Dawson for Ahsoka? Okay, so look, are I you think that there that? are a couple people... I'm not in on it. I mean, I know what's going. I know kind of like the deal about what's up with it because I do know there was a group of people that were trying to champion the voice actress mm-hmm. that did Ahsoka sure. to just go live action, which okay, that's nice and all, but you're Disney, you're trying to bring asses in seats. Rosario is a not necessarily a household name, but she's getting there. You know, she's been in amazing films for a long, long time. As early as like the first movie I really remember seeing Rosario Dawson in was Men in Black Two. You know, but she's done all kinds of shit since then. So bringing that name in is important because, again, it shows you like, look, we are invested in actually making this great. We didn't go out and just get anybody. I'm not I'm not not disparaging the voice actress at all. But voice acting is so different than physical acting and having to be the character more than just speak the character. I think there's um, some some criticism. And this is just from I and again. I don't know. That's why I asked. Because I sure. saw some people being a little bit angry, and I'm not sure if it was just that, because the voice actress for Bo-Katan got to play Bo-Katan. Okay. Yeah, hmm. yeah, that's the same actress. But does the voice actress who plays Bo-Katan do acting other than just voice acting? Well, see, and that's it. Is that like a, like sometimes there are there, there, there's crossover there, and you do have that, and other times you don't as much. Like, uh, But... And this is kind of an interesting, not like side shoot, and I'm not going to try and tangent, even though that's what we do here on the show. I've been listening with interviews from several Dragon Ball voice actors. Um, sure. And because I've been in a big Dragon Ball kick, and you know me, info dump, and I want to hear everything, you know. And I listened to uh, several of them, and almost, do you know what's one thing they all said? What, when they, when, when, they, when they have tips or suggestions for people who want to get into voice acting, they said, take theater. Number one, take theater. Number two, take improv. 
both help you substantially in voice acting. And it, it, yeah, I they, mean, you know, they said that you can do it without that, but literally you do any of those first, you're going to have such a leg up on the entire competition for roles. And it is vitally important. It's like, it, it does nothing but help you. So therefore it's like, when it comes to the Ahsoka Tano casting, I see why diehard fans would be angry because this is the character who until recently has kind of been forgotten about, you know, kind of, at least in the mainstream. We did get the last season of Clone Wars. Uh, she did reprise the role and voice for Rise of Skywalker, which that surprised everybody that they even had her there, but it was cool. A nice little touch. But then you get here. And as you said, this is a house of mouse. They want asses and seats. And from my perspective, if you're going to cast an actress to play a live-action Ahsoka, you cannot do any better than Rosario Dawson. I absolutely agree. And she And she knocked it out of the park as, as Ahsoka in The Mandalorian. Not only did she knock it out of the park, but it was almost kind of a given because she wanted to do it. The moment that there was, you know, like she said, yes, I want to do this. When you have an actor or actress who actively seek out a part when they hear there's a project or an opportunity and they want that studio to know that they're interested, that means they care and they have a passion for it other than just them looking for work. Look at totally. Henry Cavill and Geralt. There you go. He has a diehard love for The Witcher, for the books, for the game. He gets it. He loves it. And for them to be able to do a portrayal of the character that is accurate and fan-pleasing to both sets, book and video game, you cannot have a better actor for that. Because he gets it. It's not just a, you know, they have to do their own thing, sure, but it's like he's the guy that's that, he's going to know that filter of how we're going to push this through. And what's going to make both sets happy as best as, you, best as you can because he is that fan. You know? Yeah, and absolutely. When It was like, um, man, this is like 15 years ago. There was a push of trying to get a, a live-action Cowboy Bebop movie made. And the guy that okay. wanted it made was Keanu Reeves. He wanted to be Spike. And a lot of people are like, oh, he's not Spike Spiegel. Awesome. And I'm like... No, he's Spike Spiegel. I can see him as a Spike Spiegel, especially after for sure. Like, because then what happened after the uh, after that, he ended up doing like doing John Wick. And see, the thing is, is that Keanu, when he is passionate about something, he's going to put in every actor, not just Keanu, but they're going to put in their best work. They're going to do their homework. They and they are most most often they already know the homework. They already know the source material. So. Like Rosario doing Ahsoka, come on, all day. And the the other thing is that in the Ahsoka series, and I'm trying to remember if, if this is when it was said. But is that when they dropped Grand Admiral Thrawn? I think so, yeah. Okay. I mean they dr they dropped it in Mandalorian, I'm pretty sure. I, I wanna say that that was the episode. Because she says she's still out searching for Thrawn, or they say that Thrawn is searching for Ahsoka. It's one way or the other. I don't remember which, but I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that the name drop happened in the episode. And real quick to talk about Rosario. If before she was in The Mandalorian and before they cast her for Mandalorian, if they would have mm -hmm. just said, hey, Rosario Dawson doing Ahsoka Tano, just her own series, I think that people would have been like, Okay, like, cool, but there would have been some reservation until they saw her on screen. I think the backlash now is silly because we've seen her on screen slay in that, and then they're giving her a series, so it's like, why are you complaining? She proved how great she was at it. Right, right. It will, it, it, and, you know, it, 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 again, if she sought that out, that means that she understands and she's seen it and she's a fan. You know, please, like, I want people to remember that a lot of times actors – they are fans of other works and other shows and other properties. You know, one of the reasons why um, 
Um, oh, wow. Come on now, Brando. Um, brain fart. Super, super duper brain Ooh. fart. Um, Mask of Zorro. Not, not, not Antonio Banderas. Older dude. Come on now. Tip of my tongue. Edward James almost? No. Was he? No. I don't know. I just, I'm just guessing. I have no idea who's in your brain it's, right now. No. Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> and it was an A. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. It, the reason why Anthony Hopkins um, did the first season, in, in, or at least first and second, of uh, Westworld was because he got introduced to how well and how high quality television could be. And what was one of the shows that introduced him to that? Breaking Bad. Ooh, lovely. He binged Breaking Bad on Amazon Prime. And he loved it so much. That him and uh, Brian Cranston have the same agent. Or they're part of the same agency. He said, hey, nice. send, send Brian a letter for me. And he wrote Brian a letter saying how much he liked and appreciated his work on, as Walter and thought it was top notch. So imagine being Brian oh, Cranston yeah. getting a letter and it's from Anthony Hopkins saying, yes, that was good. <laughs> you know, and then Anthony's like, you know what? Like, I've been doing all these movies and it's fun. And I've never really, I, I've always saw TV as a step down, but it's not anymore. It's slowly starting to creep up into the same kind of quality of echelon. So then he gets attached to another story, Westworld. And he, I mean, Anthony Hopkins is, he kills it in everything he does. Fact. He is so nuanced. So therefore, he's a fan. Actors are fans too, you know. And, you, and along with Ahsoka, there was another show that got announced right with it. And I do believe that was Rangers, right? Oh, yeah. Rangers of the New Republic got announced. And uh, both, that's of these shows, both of these shows are spinoffs of The Mandalorian, and they're both being developed by Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni. So they're going to just be more stories in the Star Wars universe told properly without Tom Foolery or <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, whoever that Tom Foolery guy is, he can stay away from my Star Wars. He's the worst. <laughs> he's a, he's Get a, Tom <laughs> Foolery away from my Star Wars. He's the reason we ate sand before our cheeseburger. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. It was, it, it, I just hate <laughs> sand. It's coarse. It gets everywhere. Oh, now you're dropping fucking Attack of the Clone quotes. In here. <laughs> but no, Rangers. If uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that those X-wing pilots that inter that interacted with Mando, and he was kind of out there like, like uh, you know, given uh, um, he made a Marshall Dune done um, a Marshall, and is like, hey, is a Razor Crest here? You're like, oh, come on, those are so outdated. It, is he a ranger? I think so. I think that's one of the guys, yeah. So, again, they're but, just doing the really subtle, smart way of storytelling where they're spinning it out of things that actually have happened in this universe that make sense. Well, and see, they could get that same guy back or somebody else along with it and, and just grow. And you can learn more about the rangers. It's like like the Texas Rangers of the New Republic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's up there for episode title for sure. Oh shit, that's great. Uh, uh, this no. is one of those series that you know you, you didn't hear a lot about, but I'm excited for whatever they bring us when they bring it to us. Well, you see, know? there's not I a lot of I info. Say that for pretty yeah. much all these. Yeah, there's not a lot of info on this. Like, there wasn't a lot of info on on a lot of these. Uh, the uh, the info dump about Ahsoka was it's Rosario, it's and it's set in the, it's, and it's set in the same timeline, and Rangers of the New Republic also set in the same timeline as Mandalorian, and both shows are being done by Favreau and Filoni. So therefore, boom, there it is, nice bow. Uh, the next one I want to talk about, uh, we're just gonna get to it, Obi Wan. Uh, so Obi Wan starts filming Huge in March, news. and they're bringing bringing back Hayden Christensen to play Darth Vader. The show is set 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, and they're hinting at a rematch 
between these two characters that they're going to face off again. There are some mixed feelings about that because they feel like they shouldn't have they shouldn't interact what whatsoever until a new hope. I don't know about that though, Brando. I like that there's a there's another tension story that can be told where, you know, the the idea of Obi-Wan Kenobi series is he is still behind the scenes keeping Luke safe at all costs. And that's like his mission now. Vader is going to be on that same vision quest of like find his kid or whatever. And this is an opportunity to have them interact one more time and really flesh out the emotions between those two that we didn't really get in the prequel trilogy. I mean, there's the whole Mustafar scene that is really emotional, but really there wasn't a ton of emotion expelled between the two. You give 10 years of brooding to a Vader who has a 10 year old son and Luke, a daughter leia he has no idea where exists or if at all all you've got you know obi-wan who is now 10 years older moving into the twilight of his life you know uh i will say that the timeline is kind of a little wonky if space time works how normal time works because like if it's set 10 years later obi-wan is really getting crazy fucking old out of nowhere in the next seven years because luke was still a kid like 17 or 18 when he gets picked up so it's like I, I, that's the only thing I thought was a little bit funky, but I love those two having an opportunity to square off. It literally gives us um, more context to their their build. And then when Obi Wan does the most sacrificial thing and delaying Vader's attempt to get to Luke and sacrificing himself in A New Hope, it can have even more weight as a fan now. And you go, oh my god, like. They battled here, and it was it was crazy epic, and, like, Obi-Wan almost beat him, you know, and Vader maybe just, like, ran away because he's a chicken shit or whatever. But then in the second time, Obi knew what he had to do. He knew his time was up. He knew he could return to the Force and and, and all that. And that's another thing. We could get a Liam Neeson's fucking uh, uh, cameo in this because he could force Ghost return. Yeah, uh, that and that could be a really neat cameo uh, for sure. Um, now some people are wondering, it's like, okay, so if, if you're going to have Hayden be Vader, like, are they not going to use, um, uh, James Earl Jones? Now I feel if you're going to have Hayden be Lord Vader, you would see him out of the suit at some point, you know, a couple times probably like, on, like on, or on Mustafar or whatever, or damage the helmet to where you could see his face. You know, uh, or flashbacks. You can also do some new flashbacks where with scenes we had not seen before. You're also going to get the emperor, more Potent emperor, potentially that as well. You know, uh, this could also, you know, just just throwing this out here now. If this is well received, it could lead to a Vader series. That'd be awesome. Where Hayden plays Vader. And that would be a that would be a total turnaround too for him because he feels like he was exiled from acting because of his uh attachment to Star Wars. And now just like, in the modern era, he's being like swept back in just to like the option he was and exiled through Star Wars. Just like he was exiled himself from the Jedi Republic or from the Jedi only to be redeemed in the end. There you go. It's a beautiful story, man. I'm excited for that for sure. Uh, to t to kind of tie into old character. Go ahead, Brando. Sorry. Really quick. I don't know if you said this because I was trying to find something because I want to say I, I it, it, it was regarding this or, or or something something about Star Wars filming in Boston. There was a bunch of funny Boston made up quotes for like everybody having a Boston accent in Star Wars. It's like yeah, you know the Force. Yeah, yeah that thing. Hey, take this lightsaber. Your dad want me to give it to you, but you know, but your uncle wouldn't allow it. Told me to get off his yard. <laughs> 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 I tried to find that I couldn't find it but no uh, uh, the gal who is either the showrunner or going to be like the, the person because I think Obi-Wan's going to be a limited series kind of like the uh, the uh, Marvel stuff where it's like just going to be like a six episode thing and that's going to be it like uh, they are not planning on a season two or like or, or it's not like Mando this is so this is going to be a limited series and I think the person directing it she was one of the directors on Mando season one. Oh, uh Bryce Dallas Howard, I think, is one of the only females that directed it was somebody season else. one. It was another gal, and I can't okay. remember her name. So <gasps> I, 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 I do know, I do know, I do know, Asian? I do know. I can't think of her name. She's Asian. Yeah. 
So so it's somebody who's already been involved uh, and, and is kind of like up to speed on how Disney film stuff. Because uh, one thing that they did show, and I don't have a – Pepper Chow. Yeah, yep. Um, one of the things they did show is how they were filming season two of Mandalorian. And this is obviously before the pandemic got bad, but they're using this for – pandemic shooting is this new soundstage um with like video walls and shit and how they're able to do this it, 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 if you ever get a chance go back and try and see that it, it looked mind-blowing and, and for how and, and of course we've uh one of the scenes that they showed we have already seen in mandalorian so we know how it looked and it completely fooled us all thinking they were on location for that and they were in a studio hmm <laughs> I thought there was some footage. I, well, I thought there was some footage shown. I was trying to see if there was actually a description, but it says Obi Wan Kenobi footage description from Investor Day. But it's literally just talking about them talking uh, about what's coming, not actual footage. Yeah, no, they haven't started filming. It. They don't start until March, so that's still on a forthcoming. Okay. Um, well, but next we'll get there eventually. Next we'll go to um, we'll go to Andor. I think. Oh well, that that one that one works, and actually is interesting because Cassie and Andor could interact with Obi Wan possibly. Uh, well, everything they, happening before A New Hope. They already said, uh, "What's that one dude's name?" Um, Stellan Stellan Skarsgård. Is that his name? Yeah, he's going to be an Andor, yeah. and he was in Mando. Really? He's the. Let me see the baby. Yeah, the old dude. Yeah, yeah. He's the moment oh, they said awesome. him, I'm like, holy crap, that's gonna connect to connect to Mando, but it's gonna be set way before. And then yeah. of course, uh, Andor is gonna be headed by somebody who's involved in the Jason Bourne series. Interesting uh, so and that, different. And well, and they're because they're looking at Andor being in a more espionage type deal. He's a spy for the rebu- for the for the rebellion. So there's gonna be that. Uh, they're, they're you know, of course, they're bringing back K two, right? Is that his name? K2? Yep. Okay. K2SO. Uh, so they're bringing him back. And then also they, they have an actress playing, uh, oh, uh, Mon Mothma as well. Uh, so, it, again. Hell yeah. I mean. <clears throat> Andor could also have somehow tie into uh, the Solo movie. You could have him interact with the Red Crimson Dawn. You could have him interact with uh, Khaleesi's character. I can't remember her fucking name, but the Khaleesi of the Solo. <laughs> Daenerys Palin. <laughs> yeah, t- essentially Daenerys Palin. But, like, you could have – I mean, there's a lot of opportunities for these characters to cross over in inner worlds. And we've already seen that Filoni and company want to do that. They want to make this whole Star Wars universe so immersive that you're like <laughs> – you know, it, it it really is like the real world. You think the real world's this giant place and no one could connect, and I could just go into some fucking random town and know zero people. But it's possible that someone in that random town knows someone I know who knows someone I know, blah, 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 and that makes the world a smaller place, and you accidentally mention the name of some Joe Schmo, and you're like, fuck, I know that guy. And you're like, wow, it's a small world. That's Star Wars now. We're, we're creating the small world. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, it. They also... Uh, this show's already been announced, but the Bad Batch was it's kind of an offshoot of uh, Clone Wars or something like that, and it, and, and and it's an animated uh, series. But um, that one I'm interested in. But those the, that's not one of the two. Like, there's a couple things that we've already talked about that really got me excited about the Star Wars news. There's one I'm interested in getting your take on, and then there's. The other one that there's no information about, but I'm really excited to see that there's even a possibility. And I'll stop being so vague. Lando got announced. We don't know if Donald Glover is attached. We don't know if Billy D. Williams has any involvement. We have no knowledge, zero. They only just said Lando Calrissian is returning in this new limited event series, and that's it. So that's all we know. There's nothing else in that. But I popped because I was like, oh my god, we might get to see the first time he has the the Millennium Falcon, the day he buys it, the day he gets it. You know the day. We might get to see interesting origin stories with, uh, again, interconnectivity. They're, they're doing it on such a scale that I just, I'm overwhelmed by it. I would love the idea that was mentioned in the group chat about uh, you have Billy D. Williams like at a lounge kind of schmoozing. He's like, 
oh yeah, well let me tell you this story about one time when I was blah 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 blah, and then it kind of goes into Donald Glover when he's a bit younger doing his thing, and then in between you can have it go back to the to the present, like in the, and there's Billy D. Williams that they're sipping on a drink, gambling. And it's like, oh come on, you, and and whoever he's talking to, it's almost kind of like um, a Princess Bride type deal. We're like, you yeah, have, we're a, it's grandpa telling the story to the kid. Yeah, but this is Lando telling the story to like whoever he's sitting there gambling and drinking with. It'd be funny, too, if maybe like there was a droid that's with him that knows the story of what actually happened. And a couple times when he's telling something, the droid stops him and we like cut Donald Glover's like cinematic moment into like that didn't really happen that way. And he's like, oh, you know what? You might be right, actually. I think it might have actually happened like this, and then it, sw- it switches. You know, it be- it's it's a it's a way to be comical and different. Obviously, it's limited series, so my only thing is they're gonna find a way to connect what happens after the events of Return to how he got to where he was when we find him in Rise of Skywalker, and that's the bridge we're gonna fill there because that's all the only bridge that needs to be filled. We don't really need crazy exposition of tons of backstory. We had a little bit of that with so- um with solo but at the same time like you said it would also be fun to flesh out other moments so maybe this thing kicks off too but brando i gotta ask you this question because it's set in the final days of the high republic how excited are you for this acolyte show that we know pretty much nothing about it'd be interesting because this is the you know they're really hyping up this this new republic era wait new republic oh like high republic era sorry new republic old republic uh, high republic Low Republic, Left uh, Republic, Left Republic, Right Republic, Centrist Republic, um, Republicans. Oh shit, Republicans, Republicans. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Republicans, um, Republic Sand, Republic Cools. <laughs> kind of like the Mexicools back in the right? Yeah, <laughs> you got Jedi Knights rolling in on lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, I. We don't know nothing, uh, so it's like it's gonna be interesting to see what they do because this is a whole new era. High Republic, you could have Yoda involved, maybe. Uh, they may not do that. Uh, it, if I were them, I would not use that as a driving force. I would try and let let it tell its story, and then you would drop later on in, in the first season or however many episodes this is gonna be. Yoda's here. It's like, do you think Dark Plagueis will be a part of that series? Plagueis. Uh, Plagueis, I always say that wrong, but yeah. Well, I don't know how old Plagueis was near his death in Phantom Menace. I don't, th- I don't know if Plagueis was around then. Okay. I think Plagueis came after. Because literally, it's hard to remember exactly what's canon anymore because of how much has been changed. But the, but, but the story that I always thought or understood was canon is that Plagueis was around in Phantom Menace. And it was literally the night that Palpatine became High Chancellor. They were having a party, and Palpatine killed him in his sleep. Because the whole thing was to try and have the Sith be insidious and take over the Republic from the inside. And that was Palpatine. And, they, and they, then they got it, and it was a big celebration for them. And, but then Palpatine took that moment. He, It wasn't going to be just a paper title for him to wear for his master. He was the master now. And so he made it so. And also, Plagueis was really weak at that time and on a breather and all that kind of stuff. So he left himself open, and he trusted Palpatine too much, really. But... I don't know. I, we we don't know nothing. Could they make yeah. Plagueis an older, lo- longer living species and have him be around? They could, but it all depends on like, from what I understood, the High Republic was kind of like six hundred to seven hundred years before Phantom Menace. So that's why you have like. Oh a, wow! Okay, I get wait, you. Is, is is it that long? Because I want to say like the only thing that that was really uh, that could be related in input is that Yoda would be alive. That's the that's the one thing that fans are kind of like, well, they could have Yoda in it. You know, if he's a couple hundred years old, he's probably at least a Jedi Knight by then. Maybe not a master, but at least a knight. 
And so that he would just kind of be around as like a young Yoda, which would be interesting to see, but don't make him the focal point. What you could do, tell your story here. You could insert him into the story, just like just like Mando's been doing with all these other characters. And then, hey, there's an interest, Yoda series, young Yoda series or whatever, you know. Or if they are eventually doing uh, movies, which they are doing movies because they announced Rogue Squadron, the movie. This was the pretty huge one, man. This mm-hmm. one was the one that, like, was really exciting because, like, little footage we saw was cool. Like, she, uh, Patty Jenkins is directing it. She had this little teaser on Twitter she released that she's talking about, like, her dad was in the, in the military, specifically a fighter pilot. She's had a real love and an appreciation for those uh, people who actually did fight in wars. And she's never felt able to be able to tell a story that she thinks she could resonate with because timing has never been right until now. And then, like, she stands up and starts walking away after she puts her fucking helmet on. And you're just like, wait, is she doing Star Wars? Wait, she's doing Star Wars? Wait, she's getting into an X-Wing? Oh, shit, it's Rogue Squadron. This is going to be really incredible. Like, this is one of those, again... They penned the right person to come in and direct something, and I already have confidence based on her previous works to know she's going to handle it with respect and love. Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely, and you know she's no, you know, like just run the like she has a record of delivering a blockbuster movie, and you're giving her the reins to something that uh, is in the Star Wars universe, but it isn't a deadline mainline trilogy, continual overall arcing big saga. It's like, no, this is the story of rogue squadron. And that's, you know what? Sometimes it's those little ones. It's the, it's, it's the ones, whether or not this is just one movie, maybe it's just one movie that's set in this. Boom. This is this awesome story. Just, just like rogue one. Rogue one. I was going to say rogue one is the example of like how to successfully just kill it. Yeah. And, and, and you have enough fan service in there. That's awesome. Meanwhile, you're weaving in and out of the overall narrative that is taking place within the Star Wars universe. And, you know, um, you know, Vader's in it because Vader's around. Uh, and it, and, it, and, it's, and, it, and it, it's involving the Death Star. So you have to, in a way. You don't have to, but it, but it helped it just to make sure that it's the level of importance is there. Having Tarkin, not just as a cameo, but as... He basically tells Krennic, "You're not the main villain anymore. I am." <laughs> it's like, it's like I was the bad guy of this movie. Mm, no, mine. It's like <laughs> you just thought you were the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, so we can do the same here. Whether or not uh, it, now, see the X wing to me, it looks like an X wing. I'm trying to. I, it's hard to tell, but it is that the design, like the newer design from like the newer era. So is this going to be a, versus the Empire? Or is this going to be versus um, First Order? First mm. Order. We don't know that yet. Either way, I mean, me personally, personally, no, this is just me. I want this movie to follow the versus the Empire, and you know who I want in, as the main role, or at least one of. Just say it. And, and 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 it's a dude that doesn't get a lot of love. He's a dude who survived from the beginning all the way to the end. And the first movie you're yelling at him for running away. You know what I'm talking about. Motherfucking Jar Jar. I'll cut nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he was running away in the first movie. I mean, you just you said it. I, I met episode four. He was there on on, on the attack of the Death Star. And then he left. And he's like, no, oh, you, you're not going to do much help from up there. Sorry. But because he left, he lived. Yeah. Biggs died. But Wedge, Wedge did. did not. Wedge did. Wedge lived. Wedge effing Antilles became an icon. He was the he became the leader of Rogue Squadron. It, like he has his own arc and own story that's really just in the books. Um, he's a complex character because he's not he's not Luke Skywalker he's not the guy that's going to stand there with a sword laser sword and be like yeah he has insecurities but he knows what's right and what's wrong oh yeah and that's the story that I would like to be told I mean granted I'm just excited because we essentially get a Top Gun movie 
in Star Wars. So <laughs> essentially, that's what we're going to get. It's going to be amazing. So absolutely, like, I'm so you know, but I'm excited. Uh, they also announced. I don't have a picture for it, but the movies from Taika Waititi. Um, movies plural, they pretty much said, and we and we and we had like a logo. It was like a like a kind of a hippie '70s looking Star Wars logo. I assume it's going to be Star Wars with some fun. So you had a funny could story. be excellent. Well, oh yeah, he uh, he tweeted or yeah he he shared. This is absolutely stellar. So he, um, wow, what the hell? AP just blew up the chat all of a sudden. So I'm just like, what the heck? Okay, okay, okay. Whoa, Anyways. whoa. So yeah, right. It's like a it's like a seven page dissertation on on fucking Toy Story. Anyways, <laughs> Taika. Tweeted or po- posted in an Instagram post, uh, you know, a, a tweet from Star Wars that said a brand new Star Wars feature with acclaimed filmmaker Taika TT is in development. Get ready for an unforgettable ride. And on his Instagram, the first comment is him saying, "What? Ugh. As long as a longtime fan of Star Wars, I'm so angry uh, about what I'm about to do to ruin it. <laughs> like he's po." Poking fun in it because he's like, look at, look at, I mean, here's an interesting name that we didn't hear at all. You didn't hear anything about the developers of Game of Thrones because they're not involved with Star Wars anymore, apparently. You also didn't hear Ryan Johnson's name because he's not apparently involved anymore. But this trilogy with Taika, so, or possibly multiple movies with Taika, who knows? Who knows? It, it, there, there, there were a lot of things. They also announced the anime uh, Star Wars Visions which is coming to Disney Plus. It's, I don't know much about it. Again, some of these things I didn't know enough about to like say we need to talk a lot about them on the show. Something with the droids, right? A droid story, yeah. And then the children of the something is another one. Or Yeah, there were, there, were, there were a couple little fringy ones that I didn't really know enough to even comment about. And that wasn't even everything that we got at the Investor Day. Like that, literally, we just took like a large chunk of our episode discussing what we got from the Star Wars 45 realm. minutes. We, and then we had to wait. Yeah, we the, the, then we had to go through uh, Disney shows, Disney animated, and Pixar to get to the Marvel info dump, which we're going to spend for the next forty-five minutes talking. Now about. I do have. We'll we'll try to be a little quicker on this because I do feel like there's only like a little bit of headlines on some of this stuff and not a lot of talking points. But I want to say I do have an interesting story. So again, I I just got off work. We had a really long day. It was a lot of learning, um, <clears throat> science and things like that. And I had the investor call on my phone, you know, as I do just here, you know, and I'm watching it. And I saw that Pixar had their thing up next. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just like close my eyes for about 10 minutes or so. So I put my phone face up. I was sprawled out like this. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm laying and I'm laying on the couch. Okay. And then all of a sudden, Ollie's like, hey, Nate. And it scares me. I'm like, what the hell? And then I realized as he startled me. I looked down. I have slept through the entire Pixar presentation, and we are already into the trailer for WandaVision. And I was like, no, I missed it. Ah! What if this was the last thing? Did I sleep through all of all of the Marvel stuff? And then luckily, that was literally just the beginning. But it was like it like shot adrenaline into me. I was like, no, I missed everything. I missed it all. Oh, I hate it. But no, there were some juicy, juicy nuggy boys. And uh, Brando, I'm just going to kind of riff around and you can drop and pop and, and you know what not. But uh, from like kind of not least important, but just things that are, are not a lot to talk about. We did have the announcement Don Cheadle is returning to do a series called Armory Wars or Armor. A, a, Armor a possibly War. a, or, or Armor Wars. Yeah, Armor Wars. Armory Wars is uh, is Coheed and Cambria. That's my fault. Uh, Armor Wars, which is a story from Marvel featuring Tony's worst nightmare. What happens when all of his tech, all of Tony Stark's suits fall into the wrong hands? And I think this is brilliant because we are in a time now where Tony is deceased. Spoiler alerts. Rhodey is still alive. There are tons of Iron Man things he had projects built. I mean, think about the Iron Spider suit that he released in Infinity War. He has a lot of tech out there. The rumor that's huge about this one is the possibility we will have the return of uh, Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer. And that's really interesting because when he played Justin Hammer the first time, he was not an Academy Award winning actor. 
Now he is an Academy Award winning actor. He won for three billboards outside of Biloxi, Texas, or whatever the movie was. I don't remember what it was called. It was three billboards, though, is what we always called it. It was out of Mississippi. Anyways, but that was just a little tidbit. You know, nothing too huge on the Armor Wars. Um, Another very small little bit of news we got is that we are, you know, officially furthering that we're getting a Moon Knight series. Uh, the Moon Knight series, I will read just the, the little brief synopsis that was announced. It says, Moon News series is created for Disney Plus, directed by Mohamed Diab, an action adventure featuring a complex vigilante who suffers from disassociative identity disorder. The multiple identities who live inside him are distinct characters who appear against the backdrop of Egyptian iconography. So that is like, my ears were like, Whoop. could be really awesome. I can't wait to see how we're going to tie this into the actual bigger picture of what's going on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I also think it's interesting that if people got dusted in Egypt, it was very confusing for people. Like all their family just turned into sand and they're just like, wait, what? God, what? God you know, like, <laughs> maybe that was, maybe that was a bad, maybe that was a bad joke in poor taste, but wow. Wow. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Um, <laughs> a couple of the smaller things that we have, uh, not everything was a major announcement, but we did get the announcement of uh, Ironheart which is pretty exciting. I'm trying to find the little synopsis for Ironheart in here. Uh, no, 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 no. Here it is. So it just says Ironheart, the second of a newly announced uh, series coming to Disney Plus stars Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams, a genius inventor who creates the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man. Uh, that's going to be exciting that, that, that Riri is getting her own series. She's become a stalwart in the MCU or in the Marvel comic universe, not in the MCU as much uh, yet. So, uh, so far, Brandon, for the first couple that I've talked about, really not much for not much in as far as thoughts, really. I mean, not really. Um, Armor Wars was interesting. It's it's always good to see Don Cheadle doing something. Uh, it it it's, makes you wonder how and where some and w- what it will do. Some of these series will keep these actors if they're going to stick around for another team up movie or something. It'll keep them kind of around in like, hey, you know, he he wasn't in any of these movies that we have the big the big slate for, but he did have Armor Wars or he did, you know he did make an appearance in Iron Heart or something like that. So that way it's like, hey, we have all these characters and we can do it. We we don't have to. It's a way to spread that love a little bit to where you know Endgame ended with like twenty seven big hero characters on the screen at once. We can divide that up a little bit amongst like these different series and movies. That way, we don't have a billion people in every single movie because it, because as, well, as as fun as that is, you exhaust the audience when you have that. It's almost over overkill. Oh, and I think that that's a perfect lead in to talk about one of the other announcements that is. It was, this was the one I marked out the hardest for. Like. I thought this was going to be the one they got me on. Like, this is their big fucking announcement. I can't even believe this is their huge thing was they're doing a secret invasion series on Disney plus featuring Nick Fury, featuring Ben Mendelsohn, like as, as Talos and as Nick Fury, we had the rumor Nick Fury might get his own series. This is that series. I think, I don't think we're going to get a Nick Fury like backdrop story. I think this is way more prevalent to tell. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and one thing Feige said when announcing the secret invasion story that they're going to do is this is the most ambitious team up movie they have done since civil war, which really, I think was their first attempt at bringing a ton of different characters together for the first time. Well, well, well and if you know anything, series, right? This is not a movie, a series. Yeah, it is. It's a six part series. I do believe. Yeah. So like they can bring a lot of different, uh, big time actors into, and it'll almost kind of be what I kind of see this as being. This is going to be that Civil War type thing, but it's not going to be in the in the theaters. It's going to be on Disney Plus. So it's going to be a big event. It literally is going to be a massive crossover event. You're mm-hmm. going to have a lot of pollination and a lot of things that are happening in phase four are really going to come from this thing that we could have a Spider-Man crossover here instead of the next Avengers movie. You know, this could be Secret Invasion and they threw it out there, but this is just throwing this out there. This could be a big pivotal team up Avengers movie that isn't labeled an Avengers movie simply because it doesn't make sense for in two years in to be like, all right, another Avengers movies right now. It's like, no, we're still laying groundwork for stuff, you know, like 
Like, like you know, we've been sh- scattered and broken apart as a team. We faced the biggest threat in Thanos. Yeah. Like, we need to recover. You know, you, know, you like, can't just jump back into the game and go fight again. We can't have a team up movie until we get to one of the bigger announcements later on. And that's not going to be for a while. But it, in the meantime, sure. we can tell this other story here and incorporate some of the characters we already have. And it doesn't have to be a big, we don't have to find a spot for it in the theaters in this lineup of movies that we're trying to establish new characters and new ideas and new over here. Let's do it here because it'll really drive people over to the streaming con uh, or streaming. Uh, I-, I almost said console, but streaming uh, service. Uh, well, and then to kind of double piggyback off of that, I had said a couple years ago, and I mean, I think I've said it a lot on this show because it's one of my favorite like graphic novel story slash, you know, limited runs that Marvel ever did was the Secret Invasion story. And I said, man, it would be awesome if it was the next Avenger movie. This is saying this story deserves more than two and a half to three hours of a movie. This deserves really how that fucking story needed to be told, fleshed out, expanded. It does offer a very interesting concept. Will we see recasting happening from Secret Invasion on characters who are dead in the universe, dead in real life? I don't think they're going to do that with Chadwick. They already said they're probably keeping and they're not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. But you have. What if we get a different Iron Man, a young, suave, new kid, Tony Stark, comes out from this because the guy that we thought was Tony who sacrificed himself was a scroll, but didn't he just got so lost in that he had no idea. I mean, I'm not saying that's what they're going to do. I'm just saying those are the kind of risks they can take where they can say we can pivot this guy out and pivot this new younger person in right here. This is the chance. Maybe maybe Hugh Jackman is an example of that. Hugh Jackman, probably a better example of it. Uh, I would hate to do that to the Tony Stark character. Sure. No, exactly. And I think it would it would, it would totally de- disenfranchise that if they did that mm. with Tony. But I think, I think Logan is maybe a great choice. If you're going to do another Iron Man character, the Ironheart character is right there. New, young, going forward, sim- you know, similar ideas, carry forward make a new character out of it instead of being like, no, we, now we've got this young kid playing a, a young Tony Stark. And it, 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 I don't know. That just doesn't really sit that well with me. Uh, but there was another show. We already knew about this show. And we got a little bit more information about it. She-Hulk. Oh, man, I'm glad you bring up She-Hulk. Uh, the information on this was kind of shocking, but at the same time, Brando, and, and I and really uh, – throw in with me here isn't this like the most hmm, what's the word i want to look for satisfying news to get or most um it's like a confirmation of self marvel betting on their self they said look we know that people don't love the incredible hulk movie that came out when we were still tied to universal we understand that however at the jump of Marvel Studios, we said this movie really exists in our universe. We put, you know, RDJ in it. We put a lot of effort and time in it. Thunderbolt Ross has continued on through many other movies. Mm-hmm. And he's been really the one guy keeping that movie relevant until now. Because now we get the huge announcement. Tim Roth returning as Abomination. That is absolutely massive and just again solidifies and confirms that it is important you watch the incredible hulk movie even if ed norton isn't your cup of tea even if the movie itself isn't everything a marvel movie could be it's the groundwork it's where this all started it's the foundation of what we live on now Mm -hmm. and i thought that was huge news but that isn't the only huge she hulk news brando i mean i know you obviously heard about the other official casting news absolutely uh... i mean we, we are Uh, did you want to say it? Do you want me to say it? We kind of had a little bit of internet uh, freeze up because I thought you were going to say it, and then you just kind of cut out. And so I'm like, should I say it? Or, totally. or I didn't know if I should say it or if you had already said it and we're still talking. <laughs> so, no, no. I have not said it. <laughs> no. Uh, no, we're getting Bruce Banner. Um, yep. And so, and also, also, you know, uh, it, it was teased as like, you know, she's a superhero lawyer. You never know who's going to show up. Hmm. Do I know any other superhero lawyers that work in the Marvel universe by by devils? I don't think I know of any. You know, just to play devil's terrible. advocate here. Um, Ooh, I dare you to. 
Um, no, like it's okay. So like, w- w- when the show was originally announced, you know, she's not a character that I really am passionate about. So I wasn't excited at all about it. It was just it was just there. Now that they're tying the origins in with the other movie to kind of help carry her forward and do it kind of take, I don't know, taking the spot is the same right way, but maybe kind of so. Uh, I'm you, You've got my attention. And then, of course, you know, a lot of these shows blend into the movies as well. They all, We also got our first look at Miss Marvel and, and Kamala Khan and how that's going to play out and everything and how that series – uh, we actually did get to see. Uh, was it screenshots or a little bit of footage? Or there were there were some official screenshots. Now the interesting thing about that to talk a little bit about the screenshots were these were confirmed photos from Marvel as opposed to the leaked pictures that have kind of been on the internet for a couple weeks now. Sure. Her in like this, her own made up. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's cosplay based. Uh, Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel suit and like you know this great mystery we also got some actual footage of the show you know her running around in the house and stuff and showing her dad and you had Kevin Feige talking about these rich new characters we're going to be able to bring and experience and you know I know Tyler and I talked a little bit about the importance or lack of importance or strangeness of them including Kamala Khan in the game and this is the payoff of that now you have enough people who are even aware of the character, and I know she was a, a, a popular character in comics, but the popular guy, zeit, the zeitgeist beyond just comic book nerds is starting to catch on to the Kamala Khan, and she's going to slay. This is going to be excellent, but her story isn't over in Captain in Miss Marvel's show, and I and I almost fucked that up there because yeah, I, did. I just totally that she is. It's going to actually reprise that role in Captain Marvel 2, starring alongside of Brie Larson, starring alongside of the uh, now younger or uh, older, I should say, Monica Rambeau. And she's going to sure. be in the WandaVision show and doesn't know why she's there. She, yeah, she doesn't know who this, she is. Yeah, because this WandaVision show is going to shatter everything. It's going to mess up so much stuff. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna and we'll talk a little bit about that trailer here in a minute. I just wanna I wanna touch on, uh, uh, you know, on kind of the well, you know what we we're here. We'll just for a second we'll t- touch on that WandaVision thing because I did want to talk about that. Watching the trailer, there were a couple interesting things I noticed. Just t- tiny, very subtle things. First of all, obviously she in her head is changing the landscape using the reality ability she has to alter what's inside. But you heard on the radio someone yell, Wanda, who's doing this to you? So the outside world, outside of the bubble, thinks that Wanda is being affected by something causing her to do this alternate universe within the universe. The reality is she's fucking lost her marbles and is doing it to try to get some sense of reality or have more time with vision. She feels like she's robbed of that opportunity. And that in and of itself creates this crazy tension where we're going to, like you said, have characters who don't know who they are, don't know what their purpose is. Why am I here? You could have interesting cameos that we are totally naive to right now yeah, because of how they're doing the chest. it. Yeah, yeah, playing it close to the chest. And Feige said the ramifications of this series is going to go right into Spider-Man and right into Doctor Strange. We got no 100%. Spider-Man news out of this, by the way. None. Shocked me. That 100% shocked me because I was almost certain that we would have footage considering they said that Disney themselves wanted to have Spider-Man footage ready in December to show to people. So the fact that they didn't even, they literally, Feige said the word Spider-Man just in that instance talking about WandaVision and then glazed the fuck over it. Like he just, it slid right on through. Like it it was no big thing. Um, But do you want to talk about that stuff really quick? Before we carry on to the end of this and to the big part, because right leading up to Disney Investor, we got a lot of info confirmed. In other words, confirmed by independent sources that are not Sony and not Marvel and not Disney about Alfred Molina, Alfred Molina coming back as Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2. Kirsten Dunst coming back as Mary Jane from the uh, uh, Sam Raimi verse from that same trilogy. You have Andy Garfield coming yeah. back from the Amazing Trilogy and Tobey Maguire in talks. I just saw yesterday the rumor that he was going to a costume fitting 
pictures of him i saw up. the picture of him he was yeah outside of a costume shop yeah. definitely so maybe maybe so yes uh the other part is that uh, uh, another rumor is these guys are basically going to have glorified cameos that the story isn't going to focus on them but they're going to be in it which a lot of people well, it would be really in- it would be really interesting to do it that way well and it's not that they won't have a part in the story but they're it's not good obviously the story of spider-man with tom holland is not going to revolve around tobin mcguire andy garfield it's not but the i i was a fan of the idea that we never got to say a, a proper goodbye or a good tip of the hat to these actors who played the role and when they left that role either the movie wasn't where we wanted it to be or it was kind of cut off like in like in the amazing like they that they they were leading in a certain way and they just didn't continue with it you know same with you know Spider-Man 4 there was supposed to be another one but they that just kind of ends kind of I don't know that movie left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth it's it gives a chance for these actors who spent so much time and dedication into this role to be able to come back one last time and go hey guys it was fun we had a lot of fun. We hope you, we we we're glad you liked our movies. Go go and watch them again. It was really fun, and this kid's really good, you know. So that's what I want to see happen. Uh, and then of course there's Absolutely. also there's also the rumor of Charlie Cox. Uh, we already uh, we already laid rumor about him and She Hulk, but about you know that was the rumor uh, or rumor. Whoa, time out, time out, time out. You can't say you laid cock over She Hulk. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> laid cox over She Hulk. I'm just it's just. Little bit, little bit of bad timing in there, but I will say the Spider-Man stuff is interesting. Alfred Molina returning, you've got Jamie Fox returning. Will we see different iterations of those characters? Will we get to see that Alfred Molina carries on to continue to play Doc Ock beyond this one role? Like, there are great questions. There are a lot of uncertainties, and how they're going to play everything in. Kirsten Dunst being out of the cast is huge. Garfield obviously is huge. Does that mean Emma Stone possibly comes back, even though Gwen Stacy is dead? That doesn't really make sense, but maybe you could have it. Um, my bigger question is: we know all of these non-created, and this is important. We know all of the non-created Marvel characters, and I mean they were created by Marvel, but they were re-envisioned on the big screen by Sony and Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina as the two big villains. As you could kind of see, okay, oh, they're probably going to be the big bads. But my X factor question is what Marvel villain are the Marvelites going to bring to say, like, we showed you how we could do Vulture, who had never been done before. We showed you how to do Mysterio, and he'd never been done before. There's a third coming that has never been seen on screen, and I don't know who that is. And another huge that big question begs to question. There is one casting name involved with Spider-Man that hasn't been talked about, announced but only makes sense, and it's only a matter of time before I think it happens. Vincent D'Onofrio. Kingpin. If you're going to have Daredevil involved, even even for a second, having Spider-Man and Kingpin have even a one-minute interaction is massive. Okay, so, and I said this at work the other day. Imagine uh, this movie. You have Tobey Maguire, Andy Garfield, you know. I would also like them to introduce a Miles Morales or... um, or uh, 29.9, Miguel O'Hara, right? Um, because yeah. if you had all these oh, spider man Miguel would be so unique. And so, like, what if that would allow Sony to be able to make a brand-new Spider-Man movie that is Spider-Man, that isn't Tom Holland, that does not have to be shared with the MCU. He just made a little wink cameo appearance. And then they're like, all right, this is our Spider-Man over here now. We're going to make all of our stuff with him, have him cross over over here, do this other stuff. And sp- especially if it's 29.9, it could be so far in the future, it doesn't matter anyway. You know, yeah, it doesn't affect. Oh, but then it would be cool too, because then you could have little Easter eggs of shit that we have never seen in the MCU that hasn't happened yet, and you're just like, what? Maybe it, it could. Happen, maybe it doesn't happen. It happened in the universe, but maybe it and then never maybe happened. time alters exactly. Yeah. Oh yes, I love it. I love it. It's and, great. It, but, there, there are lots of options. But anyway, if you have, especially if they don't make, especially if like Miguel doesn't play like a huge role, but it's it's just, it's just enough introducing. But then you have Doctor Strange trying to make sense of all this, right? Like. Ugh. God, all right. Got you, 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 you over here. And then he sees Daredevil. He's like, what universe are you from? And he Daredevil's like, Hell's Kitchen. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I just, 
a lot of great possibilities. We got none of that from here, but we'll carry on here so we can try and uh, get the episode done with. We're over an hour and nine. We're not even done. Um, we got the official title for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. I mean, dude, we we know that literally the quantum realm is what we based half of the survival of the MCU on, yeah. really, because he got trapped in the quantum realm, and, and and Scott Lang gets to come out of the quantum realm and return. So you've got it's Ant Man and the Wasp and Quantumania. So uh, Evangeline Lilly continuing to have co billing alongside of uh, Paul Rudd. The interesting thing from this, we did get a recast of. Cassie Lang, I said in the chat, I think it's a terrible idea, and I hope, and I'm saying this as a, as a way to say that I loved the lady they cast as her for Endgame. I thought the connection for seeing her on the first time on screen, the connection her and Paul Rudd had felt natural. It's one of the moments even now when I watch I every time because it's like as a parent, knowing what that would, I mean, you wouldn't obviously want to ever know what losing your child for five years or living away from them for that long. Of course, for him, it was only five hours. Yeah. But for her, she grew up. She became an adult. So and all of a sudden that he moment lost was very impactful years. for them to just recast her. Yeah, and all of a sudden he lost yeah. five years, and now it's it, she was she was little, and now she's older. And he's like, uh, what? Yeah, no. Uh, I don't know. So I think the I think the recast is a bad it's a bad decision in my opinion, like that for the recast, but if it had to be done because of coronavirus times or scheduling conflicts or because it everything really, has been thrown off, I do understand you want to keep things rolling. It really could be that they want her to play a bigger role and they like this other girl better for where they're going with it. And sometimes there you go. And it could be just as simple as that. Sometimes when you are in a casting position, and you see, you know, this girl over here, she has these movies right now that she's getting garnering a lot of attention. And then, as you said, hey, it's all about making money. And it's like, she's really good. And it's like, look, we want to go here. Sometimes it's a hard decision to make. But then sometimes also the best casting is not the one you've already done. I'm not saying I, that I support it or don't support it. I, I kind of get it from a business point of view. Um, that that wasn't the only casting news we got out of Quantum Mania, no. though, that no. officially solidified the rumor we've been hearing about for like two months. Everyone's been like, the rumor is Jonathan Majors was cast as Kang the Conqueror. Is that possible? Is that crazy? Like, what happens? Of course, it makes sense. I said the storyline probably going to go to have something to do with all the fucked up things they did with time. You had Avengers time hopping around and stealing stones and, and doing shit, you know? And as you learned from, uh, from a uh, little, little, little ancient one, those stones keep the balance of existence happening so you also had the avengers just breaking a bunch of versions of existence just to have theirs succeed mm -hmm. so he's going to be pissed off he's not happy we actually may have already seen a teaser image of jonathan majors as kang they did release a loki trailer loki is coming soon it was really good i'm really excited to see what they do with that story uh but there's a scene where there's a gal she's like in the it seems like in the probably the future and she's behind a desk and behind her are three very large, looks similar to kind of how the Grandmaster had the big faces of the champions. Mm -hmm. But instead of them, they look like they're council members. And the center one is most definitely Kang. And I was like, Wah! again, interconnectivity. We're doing it. We're doing it here. And maybe it's not that the Avengers fucked up time that bad. Maybe it's Loki. That could maybe be. this journey Loki goes on literally breaks time and causes Kang to come down and be like, all and, right. And also I, Loki doesn't know what's going on. He has no idea at this, that Loki doesn't, he and, has no idea there was a Thanos that succeeded. And we also, he, he, this wouldn't have happened with Loki had they not gone back in time to mess with time. It's that damn Tom foolery again, time foolery. He, Tom foolery <laughs> is now in the MCU. He, he, he's over here messing stuff up. And now uh, we have two quick ones here because I don't really know much about them. We have. And I, I can am, fill you in swiftly, but and, yeah. And I am Groot series. Is this an animated series or is this? I They didn't say if it's animated or otherwise. The only information that's really been given about the I am Groot series is that it is not really a series as much as it's limited shorts. 
uh, and the shorts are going to be involved in different with involving different people and places and settings. So this is the official synopsis from Disney Plus. It literally just says, "I am Groot features everyone's favorite baby tree in a series of original shorts coming to Disney Plus." That's it. That's all they said. But that isn't really the cool uh, Guardians news because the coolest Guardians news came from this announcement that we are getting a Guardians of the Galaxy live action holiday special slated for holidays 2022. So that's about two years from now. Written and directed by James Gunn, starring the actual Guardians of the Galaxy as far as the MCU is concerned. And this was Feige saying, hey, I'm glad we have Disney Plus where we have a platform where we can do shit like this because this has been an idea we've had in our pocket for a minute to do something like the Star Wars holiday special, but with Guardians and do it like the right way because obviously Guardians is like an homage to Star Wars in some manners. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting that James Gunn's going to be a part of it, attached to it. They also said the movie or the the special will be filmed on set during the, uh, the third movie being filmed so that it's not going to take any extra time time out of these actors days or anything they're going to just plan it's going to be released it. before three kind of a, it will be it will be the lead into three absolutely yeah, yeah. so it's going to be kind of a hey get excited again about the guardians it's been a bit but here we are but the last thing was a really big piece of fantastic news to come out <laughs> my brain like i can't even like okay Hey, so let's take let's take uh, listeners uh, quickly because I we're literally really running out of time here. I just mm-hmm. realized, holy shit! Yeah. Uh, when we started the show, there was one property that I've always kind of trashed and dogged on the live action iterations of. I actually had an entire rant series on how awful the decision making processes in these movies were. I've I've trashed John uh, Josh Trank and his attempt at doing these movies, but Fantastic Four officially through marvel studios officially happening no bullshit we didn't get any footage that's okay here's the biggest but here's the biggest piece of info the direct on watts who has directed these spider-man movies is moving now to do the fantastic four films we know that spider-man his first appearance involved the fantastic four so then that calls back to spider-man 3 could we get a cameo of maybe Human Torch or maybe the entire team, we will see. But this is the awesome part about the Fantastic Four news. I'm so excited about they, in a weird thing, and I'm not really sure why they did this. Like, I thought they'd start their own, but maybe they're just like, fuck it, we're lazy, I don't know. They took over Josh Trank's uh, Fantastic Four movie Twitter page as well as that movie's Facebook page and are now putting their content through it. So they took an avenue that already was created and are saying, hey, guys, we're, we're doing it right this time. They're not, not shying away from that. More. They literally took over Josh Trank's Fantastic Four Twitter. Like, I, I saw the headline. And I was like, that's unreal. You don't get this anymore. We, we, this is ours. We own them. Put our little teaser on there. But the little four-second, five-second, six-second, however long teaser it was, it just shows the number four. It just shows a loose logo. But, goddamn, I'm excited. I am Big pumped, Brando. Absolutely. Uh, I am all about it. This is probably, that one is several, several years down the pipeline at this point because we have, I mean, we're still getting the Blade movie. We're still getting uh, the Eternals. We're still getting Shang-Chi. You know, we're getting Thor Love and Thunder. And that is, and we're getting Black Panther. The what if? Oh, that had actually Thor Love and Thunder. Thor, Thor Love and Thunder News. Yeah. Uh, officially Christian, said Christian Bale is cast as Thor the God Butcher. Yeah. So it's like we got a lot of stuff um, on the pipeline for movies. We got Doctor Strange just in their movie. So, like, this, you have, you have Guardians 3. This movie is going to be like, I mean, if I were to make a prediction, like, in, near the end of all that. Like, it, we, we, we don't have any casting yet, nothing. So it, it's going to take time. I doubt we see anything in Spider Man 3 as a cameo or anything like that. Um, but there is a distinct connection in the comic books between King the Conqueror and Fantastic Four. Also true. I mean, it's all, again, interconnectivity. Mm-hmm. They're learning how, I mean, they're not learning. They already know what they're doing. This has been Feige's dream for millions of years to play in this sandbox with these characters, how he wants to, to be able to take the stories that existed in the comics and say, you know, that's a good story. 
but let's make it a thousand times better and use parts of that story to really tell something that's cohesive in our own world. And that's why Marvel is a home run for me always. It's why all 23 movies are movies I own on Blu-ray. I will continue to champion the, that series. It would take severe, serious, un returnable misstep for me to stop supporting marvel and that i just don't see happening in the near future but uh as far as the investor day stuff that was a lot i mean we just covered uh, like uh, an hour and change worth of stuff that they announced and that was just thursday yeah and like we're running out of time we don't have time to talk about mando uh like well maybe we can save it you know next week is the finale of mando we sure. could tie them together sure, sure. And, and double it down uh all, all I will say for this episode was good work. Good work. Like it, it was awesome. Yep. I, and, I like and, it. And we'll definitely dive in more. Uh, there were some redeeming qualities, awesome moments, fresh new coat of paint. I'm all about it. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, is there anything else we want to dive into? I know this, we totally shifted how we were doing this episode. We were going to do a third thing, and that's not happening now, but that's okay. Right. You know what? Sometimes that's what we got to do, man. And no, uh, nothing else that I can think of on the fly. Uh, it's been great to sit down and talk to you again. And it's a great time to be a fan. It's a great time to be a, a nerd. You know, we got a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline from a lot of different avenues. And uh, we were wondering, after the whole WB stuff, when we all got hyped on some of that news about the Zack Snyder stuff, about the about the, about the Batman movie, and, and, uh, and, then, and, then the, and then the Flash thing, and, and then the Wonder Woman, and, like, how all this stuff's going to work. And we're like, man... We're all we're all antsy. We're all giddy about this Marvel stuff and what's going to happen. And we literally got a lot of it told to us straight up. Yet, like just the, the, the just the other day. So it gives us it gives us hope on both sides of those fronts, as well as being a Star Wars fan. A lot of cool stuff going on there. So I got nothing else to talk about really this week. All right, folks. Well, before we get down of here, as always, I should let you guys know to check out journeyintocomics.com. Make sure to get us on all the different podcasting platforms. That's Apple Music, Amazon Music, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Podcasts instead of Google Play. Don't don't mind me on that flub up there. Tune in, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all those jazz. Just search Journey Into Comics Network. I'm fucking it up this day. It's fine. I think that's it, Brando. I don't really have anything else to dive into other than the shower as soon as we're out of here. But, um... Man, I think that's going to do it for this week's Journey into Comics. This has been Journey into Comics 326. I want to call it eating sand to get to a cheeseburger, but I also logistically think that could be difficult to thumbnail. So um, whatever idea Brandon comes up with the name, we're going to roll with it this week because there was a lot of different fun little things we said for sure. Yeah, man. A really cool, really cool episode this week. I just just info dump. Just <laughs> That's literally we just regurgitated the info dump that we were given to just give you our opinions on it. That's all we had time for this week. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, I think that's going to do it officially, Brando. This was 326 of JIC. I've been Nate. I've been Brando. And as always, folks, pop your caps back and fill your brains with shit. Later, guys. <laughs>